Hello everyone and welcome to my primer for the ACP 520 Atlassian Cloud Organization Administration Certification. I'd like to note up front, this is not a replacement for all the other study materials that are available, but this should be used as an aggregate to bring together all the information that you will need uh, to help you prepare in order to write that certification exam. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so I recommend you first start by going to university.atlassian.com and going to their topics list and clicking on learning paths. And then when you go through the learning paths, the one that we wanna specifically look at, uh, which I was already on, is their Atlassian Cloud Organization Admin. And what this will do is this page is your first starting point. So if you are just becoming uh, an organization administrator, this will give you a bit of information about uh, the when you should be taking some of these courses. There are two courses available, one for Atlassian Cloud Organization Administration and one for Atlassian Access Administration. Both of those are $39 US each. Um, I would say if you don't already have previous experience, they're probably worth checking out. Um, I know the university team does some free vouchers here and there for various things. If you can pick up a free voucher, definitely worth your while. Uh, but those courses are going to help you get started in understanding the concepts of the organization admin as well as Atlassian Access if you don't already have experience with them. If you do, probably it's going to be a little bit basic for you and might not be worthwhile. I would recommend going straight into the certification itself at that point. Um, and before you we get into the certification itself, the other thing I'd recommend, which is covered in the certification prep, but we're going to talk about it now, and that is going to Atlassian.com slash try. Um, everyone can set up a free cloud instance. Um, the free subscription is free for up to 10 users. So this is fantastic for people who want to play around and learn the tools themselves. Uh, as a part of picking a software product that you want to learn, you will become an organization administrator. And that is the focus of what we want to do on this. Additionally, uh, when you're preparing for the exam, there are going to be some areas that are covered that aren't technically a part of the free plan. Uh, premium features will be covered. Atlassian Access will be covered. And in addition to Atlassian Access, managed accounts. Um, if you ever watched my videos on how to set up Atlassian Access, I did all of that on paid trial, or sorry, not paid, on free trials. So by that, uh, you can subscribe to any of the premium uh, plans for Jira Software Confluence, you name it, um, and that will give you access to the premium features for your cloud organization. It's a 30-day free trial, so I would say you can definitely set things up so that you can be prepared to, I'm going to write the certification and you sign up for the, a free premium trial. Um, and then you'll have 30 days to do all the preparation you need uh, ahead of writing an exam. When it comes to Atlassian Access, it's a little bit more complicated than that. Um, for what I did, I ended up going to a domain register um, and most of them, if it's your first year on a domain, will have discounts for it. I ended up paying $3 for a domain for the year. Uh, and then I used uh, Microsoft Azure just because of what I'm familiar with to set up an, uh, an Azure Active Directory. Again, because it was a brand new account, I got a bunch of free tier, uh, free tier subscription stuff that I was able to use for about 30 days. Um, they give you a few credits as well so that I was able to spin up an Active Directory instance, have it active for about 30 days with about three accounts that I created in there, and then I was able to use that to bring them over as managed accounts. If you are not familiar with Access, I would highly recommend going through Atlassian's uh, Atlassian Access Administration course. Uh, it'll give you all the information you need. Um, in addition to, you know, some of the other setup and troubleshooting help guides that are out on the community. Um, with all of that though, you should be able to do everything you need to, to prepare for the exam, uh, by spending no more than a, a few dollars to, to set up, uh, managed accounts. 
if you have access to play around with this sort of stuff through your work without impacting production, um, that is also another option. Highly recommend it if it's something that uh, your company will allow you to do. Now, let's talk about the actual certification exam itself. Right now, if as of the recording and published date of this video, Atlassian has a massive discount that they're offering right now um, as their introductory price. The exam is normally $250 US. It's currently $100. That gives you access to both the certification prep course as well as the actual uh, exam voucher itself. Um, if this is something that you have thought about doing, now is the time to do it. Uh, well, it's cheaper. Um, it's definitely uh, a worthwhile thing. And this is one of the certifications that can help you towards that Atlassian Certified Expert status if that's something that you are still working towards. So on the certification page itself, uh, the most important thing, uh, as I have pointed out with all the others, um, are your exam details, uh, where we can see that you are given three hours for the exam, a passing score is 62%, uh, and they're up to 65 questions, which means approximately 42 uh, correct answers are required in order to pass. Uh, and then additionally, your exam topics. Uh, this is going to be the most important thing in, as far as preparing is knowing what's covered and knowing how much things are worth. Um, as I have said many times before, uh, I would recommend taking a look at the exam topics and I'll get there in a second. Uh, and then looking at the weight that they are on the exam and by weight, I mean how much they're worth. Um, so we can see that the bulk of the exam is going to be on the Atlassian organizations itself as well as users and groups. Um, so that would be where you would want to spend most of your time studying and reviewing because uh, that is going to make up the bulk of uh, the what's required to pass the exam. Um, admin roles and advanced features, obviously a little bit less, but you know, still important. Um, not something worth completely ignoring, but again, I would say emphasis and focus on the organization and the users and groups. Taking a quick look at the exam topic list, and if you are reading this through the article I have posted on the online community, um, this covers in detail, and I will say very much detail. Thank you, university and certification team for providing much more detail this time around. The only thing I would have liked is if those links to your documentation were um, hyperlinked so that I could easily get to the documentation that um, these things are referencing. For the article I have written, I have done that legwork for you. So you will see uh, a, a bulleted list on that article that has all of these individual topics called out and documentation links for all of those into Atlassian's documentation. I highly recommend that you use your trial sandbox, whatever you want to call it, organization that you have created for yourself to prepare for this exam. Um, in conjunction with those documentation links so that you can follow along and by actually doing the actions uh, as much as you can, um, you'll probably be able to commit it to memory a little bit more. That being said, that is all I was really going to cover as far as the topics. I mean, let's be honest, I recommend you read through everything, make sure that you're comfortable with everything. If you ha are going through the, the certification prep course, uh, my personal opinion, this one is significantly better than uh, a number of them that have been put out in the past. Uh, the university and certification team have clearly listened to the community and have put a lot more effort into helping you try and actually prepare for the exam itself. The last thing I will leave you with is the scheduling of the exam itself. Um, if you have the option of going to a testing center like I have, um, please take advantage of that. Uh, I think we all know that the online, as much as it's great that it is an option, is less ideal than a testing center. So the last piece of advice I'm going to give you for uh, things is just covering a little bit on the how to prepare for your online uh, test taking, since I think most people will be going that route. Uh, so within the, the PSI portal, um, as we have all seen in the past, and let me just 
reload the, the page here. So I've pulled a different exam because obviously I, I've, I can't use the, the one that I have already passed. Um, but the one thing that I want to stress is before you even um, click the register for the exam, be sure to go and do their compatibility checker, uh, which will check your operating system. It will check your internet connection, your camera, your microphone, and it will just do a quick sanity check to sort of say whether what you have is compatible or not. I would hate for you to have scheduled the exam and then morning of you're getting ready to write it. And then, you know, PSI tells you that your system isn't even compatible. Um, that's just heartbreaking because you may not have the option to reschedule or refund your exam at that point, um, which would be uh, very unfortunate. So make sure that you do that ahead of time. Additionally, when it comes time to your exam, I think you're able to log into the exam about half an hour ahead of the actual exam time. Please, please, please go and start logging in early. Um, you're gonna have software that you need to install on your machine if you haven't already done an online proctored exam through PSI. So you're gonna wanna give it time to do that install. That software it can be annoying as it's going to make sure that you have a whole bunch of things on your system shut down. All of this is anti-cheat uh, prevention to make sure that you aren't recording anything, um, either audio or video, uh, and that you don't have the ability to tab out of the exam to go and look at study materials while you're writing it. Obviously, um, you know, we, we want to make sure that people are not cheating. Um, and as a result, this is their solution to that, which can be a little invasive. Um, additionally, you are going to need to check yourself in um, for someone to verify your identity as well as get a proctor set up for you, uh, which will involve you needing to provide your identification to your camera. My piece of advice on that is make sure that your camera has autofocus. Um, I have not in the past, and as a result, it has been harder for them to be able to see my identification. Um, additionally, you're also going to need to scan your room. So whether you have it built into your laptop or you have an external camera, make sure that it is something that's easy enough for you to maneuver around your room, including underneath your desk, because they're going to want to see that. Um, and all of that can take a bit of time to do. So that's why I recommend getting in there as soon as you can. While writing the exam, obviously you need a clean room. Um, you are allowed your desktop monitor, a sing sorry, a single monitor, keyboard and mouse, and I think an English dictionary on the desk that you're writing. So please make sure you've cleaned off everything ahead of time. <clears throat> Excuse me. They also want to make sure that you're in a clean room with no one else there and has a door that can be closed. So make sure that you pick an appropriate location um, ahead of going and writing the exam. During the exam, you are not to make any noises. You are not to leave the exam table. They don't want you covering your face. Um, and they don't want you to be interrupted by anything. So try and ensure that you are going to be uh, undisturbed throughout that entire time that you're writing the exam. Uh, I know that all of that seems like a lot. Um, that's why I wanted to call it out so that if you haven't written an exam yet, you are prepared for what the online proctoring is going to do. Uh, going to a testing center is a little bit easier. Um, you'll go into the front desk. They will... Um, sort of take your identification and verify who you are. They'll get you set up with a locker where you'll put all of your stuff away. The only thing that you will bring with you is, uh, I believe, the key that goes to the, the locker itself. Um, so that includes your phone and your wallet. All of that gets locked in the locker. They'll take you to the desk where you're going to write the exam. Um, with the ones that I have done in the past, they have sort of a little light system that um, they will get you set up to start. They'll give you a green light when um, you are being watched by the proctor as they have all the cameras set up for you already. Um, and they will let you know when it's time to, that you can start. You begin, you have your time, and then um, when you are finished, you uh, exit the exam area and go back to the locker to return all your stuff and, and you leave. As far as the actual writing of the exam, you are given three hours. Um, which in my experience from having written them in the past will be more than enough time to write the exam. So please do not panic. 
that you're not going to have enough time. In the past, for any of the full certifications, um, I have only needed about an hour and a half to two hours, and that's including going back and reviewing a number of the answers I flagged um, as, to follow up on uh, as I went through writing the exam. And on that note, please, uh, there is a mechanism for you to flag questions that you aren't sure about. Flag absolutely everything. You don't have a limit on the number of them that you can flag, and by flagging them, you can very easily go back and review those questions and answers at the end, um, which I find personally, it I'm, I'm very nervous at the start, and I flag a lot of them up front, and then once I start to get comfortable and get into my groove, I'm flagging less of them, but then I'll go back and review the first few, and I'll be like, you know what? I don't think that answer is right now based on a question I answered or, or later in the exam. And I'm pretty sure that a few uh, points have been gained by being able to go back and uh, change some of those answers. Additionally, I know people are going to say these questions are designed to trick you. And I will say that for anyone who doesn't speak English, it's definitely going to feel that way because a lot of this is based on the language that is used and not necessarily the language used, but the English that is used in the exam. Uh, so for anyone who doesn't have English as a first language, this is going to be challenging from that standpoint, as you're going to need to know the nuances of the English language to understand exactly what it is that is being requested of you. That being said, read the question carefully, take your time on it, read all of the answers, um, don't immediately get to the third answer and say that's the right one and move on, make sure you've read through all of them. There is always a reason why any answer is correct or incorrect. And when they're saying find the most correct answer, you will want to make sure you have read absolutely everything so that you are prepared for what that a most correct answer is versus the incorrect one. And while some of them may seem as though there's multiple correct answers, there is 100% a reason why one of them is more correct than another. On any of them where they ask you to select more than one, be sure to provide answers for everything. And actually, you know what? With every question, be sure to provide an answer. There are no negative points given for incorrect answers, so you can't lose by at least guessing if you have no idea. You never know. A random guess might actually end up being a correct answer, so it always helps to answer every single question. On the ones where they ask for multiple selections again read them all carefully and make sure that there is a justifiable reason for every incorrect answer as to why it isn't correct and in in turn a justifiable answer for why everyone is correct that is all i can offer at this point as far as um helping you prepare for this exam i wish you all the best and uh, i'll see you in the next video I hope you enjoyed this guide and found it useful. I put it together while I was preparing to write this exam myself. And as of publishing this YouTube video and the article, I am pleased to say that I have successfully passed that exam. So I hope that this will help you be just as successful as I was. Thanks for stopping by.